question together. And guys, I know like which ones were missed by a lot of us and which ones were only missed by a few of us. If I don't spend a lot of time on the question that you missed, you might need to come meet with me because it might have only been missed by a few people. And if I don't go deep enough with it, come work with me, right? Like AO extensions. Um, I'm even starting like morning <clears throat> homework time or if you can get a ride to school early and you plan it with me. You gotta plan it with me, but you can come to school early. I will let you in the side door if you need some extra time to do homework or revisions or whatever. Now that is not time to work with teachers. It's just time that you could do work. So if you just need more time to do work, plan it with me. Cause like next week I'm out for a couple days. So like I won't be here early cause I won't be here at all, right? So, how you get your test grade to change, you're going to take the paper that I give you at the end of class, you're going to do it, you're going to staple it together with everything right now, the draft paper, the original test, like all that, gets turned back in, your grade will change. Questions? 511 will probably actually have to move to Wednesday. I'd rather cover things well than cover them quickly, because it makes no sense to rush through something for it to just not be understood. So let's spend whatever time we need to today on these revisions, and then we'll talk about moving forward. In, oh really, when you look at A, B, and C here at number one, which part do you guys think is the hardest? Parker? A is the hardest part. So if you look to A and you're like, oh crap, I don't know what I'm doing, move on to B or C. So we're going to do A together, but before we do A together, since B and C are easier, let's look at those real quick. The distribute, no, wait a minute. Isn't the order of operations, some of you wrote this on your test, but isn't the order of operations parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, I mean, if you don't have this written on your test, I would for sure write it somewhere on your test or on your graph paper. And by the way, top of your graph paper should say chapter four corrections, chapter four revisions, give it some kind of header. I had it on the start slide, like, uh, sorry, in the other class, I told them what header to put. Yeah, just tap, chapter four revisions, chapter four corrections. Why am I not going to start with parentheses? Let's just look at B. Let's do B again. Why am I not going to start with 3y minus 4? Liam? Well, first you need to multiply everything in parentheses by but, 2. But parentheses is first. But multiplication is down here. Parentheses comes before multiplication. Parker? Three uh, y and four are not like terms. Guys, a lot of you <coughs> Evelyn and Donnie is just gonna work out right now. So it only looks like Evelyn cares about whatever Donnie is doing. You're sitting way too close for me to think that you're gonna be able to focus. Put a little distance between you. You got extra open seats. Let's just go ahead and have one of you move. I think Donnie was here first. I will go ahead and move to a different seat so we can focus better. Or rock, paper, scissors. Actually, whoever needs to move, somebody move. We're too close. We're not going to be able to focus very well. <coughs> Bless you. So, why we don't start with parentheses? I cannot take four away. Because I don't know what three y <coughs> is. Bless you. So, I cannot do that subtraction. So like Liam said, we are supposed to multiply with that number that we had up front. <clears throat> but we do it using the technique that we learned is the distributive property. Distributive property, which we learned involves drawing arrows first, right? If you didn't get one correct, I would be writing this on your graph paper. Not like because it's worth anything, but it's worth it for you to know what you're doing to make the progressing the mastery a whole lot easier. Each arrow tells me a multiplication. So what's two times three y? Six y. What's two? Wait, two times eight. What's this number? Negative four. Negative four. What's two times negative four? negative 8, which yes, you could write 6y minus 8, or you could write 6y plus negative 8. Questions? You got that right? Good for you. Like we said, A was the toughest one. So we're going to go back and do A. 
Also, if I move slightly too fast, I am also recording your class today. So that whichever class you want to go look at the review of the mastery, and I did it in one edit. It's going to be pretty much the same, but so it's exactly what you guys heard. If you want to go back and look at the video, go back and look at the video. So kind of the same question I asked last time. If we look at A, it says 7 plus 3 times x plus 2. Do we start with parentheses and do x plus 2? No. No! They're not like terms. Do we start with 7 plus 3? No. No! I got people not paying attention even though I was trying to be dramatic. Addition does not come before pretty much anything else. Pretty much anything else. So the multiplication, now guys, we could actually make our life easier and move this 7 plus. What property lets me move numbers? Anyone remember? Okay. Um, so um, mutative. So I could move that plus 7 to the end so I don't get confused. And now I can do my arrows. I'm going to use colors to help me out. What's 3 times x? 3x. Yeah. What's 3 times 2? 6. Plus 7. Can I add 3x plus 6? No. No. Not like terms. Can I add 6 and 7? No. Yes. Yes, which is how we get to 3x plus 13. So here's what the right answer should have been for a, b, and c for 1. Again. What you're writing down right now is for you. I'm not even checking what you're writing on your graph paper. What I'm checking is the follow-up assignment. Questions. 7 times 2n, 14n. 7 times 3, 21. All of that's positive, so part C is actually the easiest part here. In number 2, I tried to warn you that there are more negatives involved here, and the negatives make things tricky. So we might as well do B and C here, because A is actually the easiest one in this problem. So for B, if I was you and if I got this wrong, I'd be writing this down. Anyway, it would have helped me with what I do next to start solving this problem, start simplifying. We start by drawing something, which a lot of you should like, a lot of you are good drawers. We draw the... The swooshes, the arrows. This negative 7 is going to multiply by 3x, and it's going to multiply by negative 4. All right, guys, I had somebody this morning ask, like, wait, but why can't, like, why don't we? So if we think back to, like, um, well, actually, we can do this with this one. So 3x minus 4. All right, somebody this morning said, oh, like, why don't we do that? In your head, try to remember what 3x looks like. And in your head, try to remember what 4 looks like. You got it in your head? So our 3x right, our 3x our 4 can I take these 4 away from 3x? No. No! Because we don't know what the heck these are. Guys, remember, our x, we don't know what it is. It might look like a certain size, but you turn around and you look, look back and it's bigger now. And you turn around and you look back and now it's like, it all depends on what people tell you x is. And if we don't know it, we can't do minus 4. Now, if somebody walks up and says, hey, x is 5. Now we could figure it out because we would know we'd have like 5, 10, 15. Then we can minus 4, but that's not the case. We cannot do this. So we end up doing our multiplication. Negative 7 times 3x. Negative 7 times 3x. 21x. Negative 7. Negative, negative 21x. And negative 7 times negative 4. Positive 20. Some of you guys got the negative 21x but then you had minus 28. A negative times a negative. Guys, a negative times a negative. This is why I've been trying to brainwash you to stop saying minus. That's negative 4. You can call it minus. But I feel like it's kind of like when I actually called Ben Ben instead of Benjamin, because he wants to be called Benjamin. 
And I like you can call it minus. At least that's what it was at the beginning of the year. So when I asked you, and you're like, I go with that. But every now and then I admit I accidentally say minus. It's still the right, but it's just not as good as saying negative. All right, if we look at C. Can I start with nine minus three? No, because subtraction does not come first. So guys, I'm just gonna show you what I did here, like just bring my screen down. Also, so this is recorded for a bit longer. What number is this? Negative three. Negative three. Negative three times x. Negative three x. Negative three times two. Negative six. What can we then combine? The nine and the negative six. Questions? You gotta do like terms to go together. All right. Um, did anyone see what I did here that I thought I was clever? Parker? But. <laughs> So wait, can you do 5x minus 8y? Uh, Why can't we do 5x minus 8y? They're both variables, but they're different. So what could I do with the 5x? As you should all have highlighters, but if you don't, there's highlighters back there in the bins, each is all container of them. If you want to go get highlighters, Color coding your different variables is a good way to keep your brain from accidentally making a mistake. Now wait, what number is right here? What number? Negative 8y. Negative 8y. What's the other number? Negative 17. Our x's go with x's. Our y's go with y's. Huh. B, C, and D were pretty much identical. <laughs> Guys, if you grabbed highlighters and you color coded, X gets one color, Y gets a different color, M gets one color, N gets a different color, P gets one color, Q gets a different color. Did I forget A and B? Whatever. Yeah. Color code. Make your life easier. You can only combine the light terms that have the same variables. Questions on this. So on your follow-up assignment, it might be a really good idea to use highlighters. And all of them come out with a negative 25 of one of the variables and a positive 37 of the other variable. Did you do that with cursors? <laughs> Nothing sounds like it. Guys, the next section of the test is dramatically centered around using proportions. I would write this down again, but I would put it on its own separate piece of paper. And it's on my, my whiteboard, right? Like Even once I move on from this slide, you've got it. But what I want to remind you before we move on is we're always multiplying, right? To go across from one value to the next. If I do not know what to multiply by, if we don't know what to multiply by, what do we do? Divide. Divide backwards, right? So if we're looking for this multiplication, let's say we're doing it on bottom, and we call this A and we call this B. We're trying to multiply to go from A to B. If you don't know what to multiply by, like it's not a nice times two times three, you can't figure it out, do the division and that'll tell you what to multiply. Questions. As long as the labels on top match the labels on bottom, you're good. Marcy, come on, you gotta do this smart on this. I'm thinking about what you put on the back of my paper. And I think you should announce it to the class. <laughs> what did I give you, Amara? But what's it say in fine print? Legal tender is like money you can actually use. So I want to clarify, it is not legal tender. I'm so sorry. You think I don't? I see how it is. 
No, he's just he, Mr. Hudson. Mr. No, Hudson I'm is. Mr. Hudson is the trickster. All right, so per guys, math is its own language, but unfortunately, we have to involve other languages, like English. Per some of us think per means like a hundred because per cent. The cent means the hundred. What is per telling us to do mathematically? Evelyn? Like it's what it's like one or something. So what you're talking about is when someone gives you like the unit rate and they say per, you're right. But to get to that unit rate, per did something. Chase? Per is division, guys. So cost per two up, you know there's division happening. Now, why do you figure out there's division happening? Problem is, you know how in English we read left to right? Yeah. And if you don't read left to right, it probably wouldn't make sense. In math, we also go left to right. So what comes before the division? The cost, right? Cost. So we're going to do our cost divided by the number of tulips. And honestly, I probably don't even need that hashtag. It probably just makes it a bit more. So guys, what a lot of you did wrong, you did flowers divided by money. That tells you how much you could get for a dollar, and they're gonna like cut a flower in half for you. It's like, no, they're not gonna cut a flower up for you. We need the cost per tulips, which will get us to the cost per one. So when we go and do that math and we set up that division cost divided by number of tulips. 60 cents. Money needs two decimals. Now in Flynn's Flowers, Flynn's Flowers gets a little funky. Because when we actually do this division, it comes out to be like 0 0.571428. It's, it's a mess. But how many decimal places would you use for money? Two. Two. So if you use 57 cents, it's 684. If you use 58 cents, if you rounded this up, like all those crappy stores that always round up no matter what, like gas pretty much always rounds up, it'd be 696 if you use 58 cents. But if you use 57 cents, it'd be 684. A dozen is 12. For those, some of us are still like, there are a dozen inches in a foot. That's one of the nice, a dozen 12, 12 inches in a foot. I bet you kind of did the same thing with it. I mean, I already gave feedback, so I mean, check out the feedback and see. Uh, that was just from earlier. Uh, we'll come back to this if you want. A lot of you guys actually got this right, but there's so many different ways to talk about our answers. You could do feet per hour. You could do, what else did I write down here? Sorry, this wasn't this one. You can do feet per minute. You can do inches per hour. You can do inches per minute. Guys, if you wanted to go crazy, you could even go all the way to seconds. Like how far they're traveling every second, which I think a couple of you did. Um, this is supposed to be feet per um, hour. Sorry, this I just wrote the wrong letter here. So FPH for feet per hour. If you, if you did feet per hour, this is the one that I have on my key. If you did feet per hour, it's 24, 22, 21. Old May wins. I know what a surprise. Somebody called Old May. Lightning takes second, and Zippy wasn't so zippy today. We'll come back if people really want to go to that again. Mr. Combs' car! And yes, that's a typo. That extra S is not necessary. So here's where we start using our proportions. Everybody, at least if you didn't get this right, set up fraction equal to fraction. I should see a lot of pencils moving because I know many people didn't get this. Liam Baker to the carry office. Liam Baker to the carry office. <laughs> Not me. Oh. 468. Now, it doesn't matter what I put on top or bottom, but if I put Miles on top, that forces Miles to stay on top. So then the other thing I have is gallons. And that's going to force gallons to be on 
bottom. What's the other like value that I know? Seven hundred fifty-four miles. So would that go on top or bottom? Top. On top. I actually need to highlight that. So seven fifty-four. If we don't know what to multiply by, divide. we divide. So what you're going to do is seven fifty-four divided by four sixty-eight, and you get an ugly number. But that's okay, because you can use your technology to make your life easier. Check it. When we do 754, divided by 468, we get a gross number. I mean, it's not terrible, because actually it's got this nice repeating ones. But I don't want to try to write that down, and I don't want to try to type it in. That 1.611111 is what we're multiplying by to go left to right. So what do I need to multiply the 1.61111 with? 18. 18. So you leave this number in your calculator, and you just hit times 18. And it actually turns out to be a nice number. Now, you could have also gone miles per gallon and then built it up from there. Jack, are you going to do some uh, jumping jacks? Because you're about to get to class and do some jumping jacks. Because if you're falling asleep, we're probably all tired, so you'll be good. I just can't get out. Jim, Jim. Okay. I can't work out. You, just can't. you can't. That's just a lie. Can't. I do it. All right, so this is what happens. We get 29. I just didn't show all my work down here. Because I, you know, this is my Liam. I went backwards and I divided 468 by 18. That could work too. You did yeah, the but, unit rate first. Yeah. Same thing with Pettigrew's cupcakes. If we have four cupcakes in 15 minutes, set one label on top, one label on bottom. Now, what's the first thing it asks us? Cupcakes in. One hour. An hour. Okay, guys. An hour. I'm not working with hours up here. <laughs> it's 60 minutes. So we know that this hour, I can just use 60 minutes. How do I go from 15 to 60? Multiply by four. <laughs> Multiply by four, so we do the same on top. How many cupcakes per hour? Eight. Now, you might think that's, like, not fast. <clears throat> you guys also, I don't ever have enough time in class. But I really wish that we could watch like some of those Food Network shows or like whatever. Anyone watch like the baking or decorating competitions over like winter? <clears throat> so have you ever been watching one of those shows and they're like, guys, we need to move faster. We do not have enough time. They're doing the math in their head of if this took this long and I need to do 10 of them and we only have that much time. They're doing the math. This is why it's important. If you're trying to like make treats for somebody's birthday party and it's taking you a long time, you got to be able to figure out, do I have enough time or not? Like, life is full of proportional relationships. So if Pettigrew decides she wants to make 80 cupcakes, she's so nice. Also, we had less students last year, and I just decided not to rewrite this test because 80 works out nicely. Cupcakes has to be on top because it's been on top. If I don't know how to get to 80, divide backwards. Well, this is actually a nice times five. So some of you said 300 minutes. Totally fine. If you said 300 minutes, that's right. But 300 minutes is also five hours. Questions on Pettigrew's cupcakes. And no, we do not have any because there are none. And I forgot to eat the treats she brought in yesterday. So we can be sad to get. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a little bit of this to go away. Like when we get to my biking problem, I would like to be able to ride that far again this summer. Oh, hey, look, my brother. Delivering newspapers. Uh, yeah, I think he's just walking in this one. So if it takes three hours to deliver 180 newspapers, well, funny enough, 
a lot of you figured out how many minutes are in three hours. 120? 180. So there's 180 newspapers and 180 minutes, because it's really a paper every minute. Or we can break it down to how much can he do in one hour, and that gives us a nice 60 value, and then that can build up to one. There's multiple ways to do this. But it's really he's delivering a paper every minute. Imagine how close the house is. By the way, this is like not made up. This is true. This is Brad. He legit delivered papers for his first job. He said he made good money doing it. So that was back in the day when like the people you would deliver to would like give you treats at the holidays and like give you like a, a check or like a card with money in it. Because at least in Kashaki, um, you know, they were always really nice. And then when I got old enough to deliver papers, adults were doing it in their cars. And I was like, man, I want to ride my bike and deliver papers. Same story, proportion, two different labels. Put one of the labels on top, the other one goes on bottom. Oh, come on! You're lucky Miss Fisher's watching out for you. I was sneaking back. You're lucky she's looking out for you. Again, So how do we go from six miles to 27? If we don't know how to multiply, divide, you get four and a half, and well, one times four and a half is four and a half. Funny story. Uh, I did 30 miles last year on my bike. Nice. Um, yeah. Until oh, no. I injured my arm driving. That's not good. Now, if you think I'm making this up and I'm too old to ride that far, I'm not making this up. <laughs> what? I'm just knocking stuff over. So, for real, my favorite ride a couple summers ago, my favorite ride, not going to tell you exactly where I live, but I'm like right in this area, the, the far northwest, I guess is what Google Maps calls us. So, I'm in this area of Worthington, not technically Worthington, but if you've ever been to Glacier Ridge Metro Park, which is like way out here, it's up this way. I've never heard of this. Yeah, I guess I could just like, you know. I've never heard of it. Oh, there it is. I usually go to Hyper. Yeah, so you can actually, because there's a disc golf course up here. And I haven't talked about this much this year, but I like to disc golf. So you can actually bike all the way out to Glacier Ridge. And it's kind of safer than biking downtown, because downtown there's a lot of traffic. So yeah, I would bike from up here all the way out to Glacier Ridge. And that was about 25, 27 miles to get out there. Um, or at least out there and back. I think downtown and back up was longer. But guys, like literally, you gotta plan this out. And if you're gonna take if you're gonna take a long ride, you gotta know if I'm riding at such and such pace, and I can go this far in this amount of time, and I gotta get home by a certain amount of time, it's all proportional relationships. It's all proportions. Number 10. Um, this is made up, but it would still really be funny if you go ask Miss Hassan if she's super into trains. Um, I asked her last year if I could write her into my test, and she said, I'm pretty sure her response was, how do you know I'm not actually into trains? I was like, are you into trains? I love all trains. And she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, 42 feet over 6 inches, or 42 feet compared to 6 inches. You could either... Tell me that the scale, just like what we did in number nine, would be every inch is actually seven feet. Or, and like I marked this right on your guys' paper, you could also say 84 to one, because seven feet is 84 inches. So really, if you had your little, like. So let's say this is our model train. <laughs> and th this is our one, the real train, because this is about an inch. This is actually a pretty good representation of an inch. The real train would be 84 times as big. If you just go inches to inches. Now, if you want to switch units and go inches up to feet or inches to something else, that Ohio map back there, every one inch is 11 miles. I know it's awkward. Why did they make it 11? I don't know. But every one inch back there is 11 miles. So if you were using that map, you measure an inch, that's 11 miles. Questions? 
then proportions, more fraction equal to fraction. If I set up my scale, seven feet to one inch, I'm trying to get to 182 feet. If I don't know what to multiply by, Divide. divide, and we figure out that is 26, so what we end up multiplying by here is 26. Or if you made this 84, it would have been a not so nice number, it just wouldn't have been as nice. Um, I made the one on the new test slightly easier than this, you don't have to mix units. I, most of us got this right. Scale factor between the triangles, what are we multiplying by? The scale four. Factor. Okay, so scale factor four. Making the missing side 20. And please have Sammy Molesky to the Perry office. Sammy Molesky. Thank you. Guys, again, set up your proportion. This part is given to you. Eight feet for every one inch, that's given to you. Set that up and start with that. Then they ask us, okay, what about three and three fourths inches? Okay, how do I go from one? to three and three fourths. Okay, this is when a decimal might be better because we're gonna put this in our calculator, but it's 3.75, right? It's times 3.75, so we do the same thing on top, times 3.75, we get 30. And 13, and 13. Again, we already talked earlier about x, but the comparison to x squared. Guys, what kind of shape is x squared? A square. It's a squ Listen, x squared. It's a square. It's a square. X squared. I have my cardboard one over there. Versus x. Well, x is always a rectangle, and like the, the short end of it is only one. We said we always call this one. X squared is always x by x. We don't know anything about x squared, really. But we know that x is an end of one. And my little Jagged lines there hopefully show that the size can change, right? We don't know how big it is. And 14, our perimeter and area. Area we could have just counted. I guess perimeter for this one, we could also just count our way around. Area, I also showed the work if you were doing like the computation for it. Perimeter, some of us just didn't quite count all of them. Remember, there are three down here, there are four out here, there are three up here, and there's still four over here. Some of us forgot this extra four because I think you only looked at this end. Remember, this four also exists. <laughs> so our perimeter is 4x plus 14. The next one was a bit trickier because that whole like missing part. And there's multiple ways to do that. I just like to make one of them x minus 1 and then count everything else separate. Now, if your test said something different than progressing, like there are a couple of you that might just need to come see me because your test was really close to master. And I just want to talk to you about it. No. So, like any other extensions, we're almost out of time. And we got one more problem to go over. Okay, we got one more problem to go over. Okay, great. Is there one more problem? Uh, oh, no, there isn't. Right? So this, the follow-up, is how you turn your grade from progressing to master. So no one should be turning their test back in right now. So here's my advice. Take your test. And the graph paper that you just wrote on, I would attach that graph paper to your original test. I would not staple the follow-up onto it yet, because you're going to want to look at the graph paper while you're doing your follow-up. So I wouldn't attach them together yet, but if you choose to, that's up to you. The follow-up is what needs turned in to get your grade to a mastery. But it should get turned in with the other stuff, just because you should keep those together. Come see me at, at like extensions and talk to me first. What? Let me pause my recording real quick, at least because this gets awkward because my face.